watch Overwatch finale. It's the grand finals here. I wanted to say World Cup. I really did. Uh, unfortunately, it's not the World Cup. No, I know. I missed it. Better production Sabah. than the World Cup, though. We did. I uh, look. We we did. We did pretty well there, though. I was I was proud of us fighting those fights, fighting the good fight. Absolutely. Know? What team did we play against, Mitch? Uh, it was versus. <laughs> I can't remember. Iceland, Iceland. I was working Iceland, right? Yeah. I had worried that we were going to be playing Japan at one point. I was waiting for that match. I was yeah. actually off work at the time, but we got revenge for rugby, so. Yeah, but we couldn't. We couldn't do it. Couldn't make it happen. Unfortunately, yeah. Well, I was supposed to be here on my own today, but luckily we managed to rope in Andy. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a pleasure to be with you, Andy. Although we've worked together in many productions, I've never actually gotten to cast with you. I don't think. No, no, no. I've been always in the background watching you. You know. <laughs> there we go, yeah, I was watching and waiting, observing as well, but we've taken you away from your duties today, out of your comfort zone. Looking at these two teams today, and I know what your answer is going to be, being Irish yourself, mm -hmm. as we both are, but, you know, one of us is a bit more biased. Which team's going to be taking it across the line? Oh, I'd say it's when will this team have a name, definitely going to be beating it over uh, KSP's drill playlist. The lads have been practicing for literally years, I think, you know. Well. They've been scrimming super hard, like, I think it's been 24-7 for them, so they're going to be going pretty hard against KSP, so... But you yourself, you think KSP are going to be taking it, though? So? I mean, just, just to make sure we've got a bit of a split desk here, I, I want to say it's going to be KSP taking it across the line. I, we've seen Grathen many a time, but in my heart, I truly want the Irish yeah, to Yeah, to be fair, Grathen is a super solid player, so I'm not going to be surprised if he does take the win and you know, push it forward for KSP. So. Yeah, that's it. We're highlighting Irish across the board. That's really what we want to do. Uh, looking at the way we're running it here, I think we're going to be starting because the, the map pool at the very beginning kind of leans us so towards it's, it being... It's Lijang, Nepal, and Oasis, I think they have choice of. So it's going to yeah. be KSP picking the map as they won the winner fi so final. With, so with KSP picking, though, I think they lost Lijang last time that they played. Uh, I think so, yeah. Actually, they lost it too. when will this team have a name. So, like, they so may want to pick a different map if they think yeah. maybe they weren't that strong on Lijang, or maybe they think when will this team have a name is stronger than them on Lijang. So, we're going to be seeing shortly enough, anyway, when they pick their match. Um, but for now, it's just fill and air. It's all up in the know? air. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all up in the air. I, I feel like we're probably going to see the, the Li Zhang being avoided by KSP. It just tends to be in pretty much every game. Whenever a team loses a map, they don't mm -hmm. pick it the next time. It, it's, it's the way life goes. Yeah. And the Irish lads, I mean, every single time we've done an Irish <laughs> tournament, whether it's been the online, whether it's been with Raid, whoever it's been with, there has always, always been, been Lijang. Lijang. It's always featured in every single series. What was it? It's the DE... It's DE underscore cash yeah. of Overwatch, if you're a CSGO fan. <laughs> the, uh, the Irish scene always plays cash, and we always play Lijang. Exactly. So for KSP at the moment, I think the solid bet is to take it maybe somewhere like Nepal. I don't know how they fare on those maps. There's one way to find out, and that's we'll by seeing see. We'll have to see, you know. Um, well, we're just going to be waiting now for the uh, thing to go on, so... Who, who knows how long, Andy? This is, this is yeah. the life. This is the life. You always <laughs> get to sit behind it. You're always getting to press the buttons, but now you get to see. We, we just, have to, just have to wait. Wait yeah. and see how long it takes. <laughs> when we're looking at the, the teams in general, though, uh, at the moment, considering the fact that we've got KSP, I, I believe they won the first map of the series they played last time, and then they lost the following two just from talking to them. Um, oh, was it that was it that the case? I actually don't know. Yeah, yeah I think they, they yeah. went up 1-0 and then bombed out. So there's a little bit of pressure on them, it, I suppose. No, it was a super close um, a super close game. Like I think on the last map of Temple of Anubis, it was literally down to wire. Like mm -hmm. there was the matter of two kills was going to decide who won and who actually got up on the stage first. So, But I mean, like, when will the team have a name? They are a strong team, so they did win in the lower bracket finals so, um, against Boomers. I think it was pretty decisive. I think it was a two, yeah, Boomers, you know, Great perfect name. name. I think they're all about 12 years old, so, you know. Ah, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it was, it was a great game, and I think, you know, when will, this when will this team have a name really showed how strong they are. You know, I think, like, up there on the stage, those are, like, sort of the future Irish World Cup players. Like, without, without a doubt in my heart, you know, that's, that's sort of uh, where we're going to be seeing them, you know, next year, year from now, so. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Show Iceland who's boss. Yeah, exactly. Get revenge on Japan. Lots yeah. of teams out there we can take the heads off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh... You know, I mean, looking at, looking at as well, th these guys are some of the younger players, and you said that they've been playing for years, I mean, mm. practicing for uh, getting on a stage, and it's yeah, going to yeah. be some of the guys' first time really on a, on a decent stage, getting to compete against the British players. I mean, how much better could it be? I, in the World Cup, was it, I, I think I saw the brackets at one point. I, keep on, I was working that whole mm -hmm, week, mm -hmm. but I'm pretty sure that we would have went on to face the UK. Yeah, it wasn't exactly an amazing bracket. We were up against Iceland, who we've scrimmed against for a month, and then we were up against UK after that, yeah. if we beat them. UK got a bye, right? Yeah, UK got a bye, because they're a top uh, 6 to 10 team. So, mm -hmm. you know, unfortunately, we didn't do amazing in the bracket. Like, the sort of selection, if we'd gotten any other team, we would have, you know, absolutely <laughs> rolled them. But sure, you know, there's always next year. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll destroy them next year, so, um, yeah. 
I hope so. I hope so. It certainly gained a lot of traction anyways. Oh, for and sure. Like, I think the support from the fans has been amazing, you know. Like, it's been genuinely heartwarming. And the fact that we've managed to raise, I think it's 1,500 euros so far for Down Syndrome Ireland. Is, yeah, it's you know, fantastic. It's something to be proud of, you know. It's like no other country has gone and done that, you know. We've sort of shown the true Irish values of looking after each other and, you know, making sure um, that's the I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if we're allowed to do it, but it's for a good cause. So yeah. if you guys want to get an Irish Overwatch jersey support Down Syndrome Island, go on over to CelticWolfhands.ie. Yeah, CelticWolfhands.ie. Right? You can get yourself a jersey shop. there. And I've uh, got one. Andy's got one. We yeah. didn't bring them because we weren't thinking. But luckily our observers have. Shout out to Unregistered Rep in the, the Irish Overwatch jersey. Yeah. And you'll see it. He'll do a catwalk on the stage, I think, afterwards. Well, yeah, we'll get so. him out afterwards. He'll do a nice turn and everything. <laughs> he's, he's looking at us like, please no. He doesn't know what he's gotten himself into. No, no, exactly. He's, he's our model, the official model now. I think we'll have to go with pop up pictures of the catwalk up on the website. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's looking at me like he wants me to come over there, so I think I'm going to go over there and see if everything's running smoothly. You so go and check it out, Andy. So, Andy's also, run, I mean, he runs everything at this point. The Irish Overwatch World Cup team looks after them when they're over there and then obviously handles all the tech issues, making sure the players are up on the stage on time. And you saw they were up there, they're preparing for. What's going down? They've been warmed up quite a bit. Talking to both teams, they're, they're very much warmed up and ready to go. And Andy, is the game... So Andy's just on his way back over. Here, here he comes. He has returned. Looks like the game's ready to go. We're jumping into Li Zhang first. A brave pick by KSP, considering that they lost here last time these teams played. Yeah, definitely. Um, oh, hello, we're still on camera. So wait, no. Obviously, we got a little bit of the setup time for the guys to pick who they want to be going with. One of the more annoying things about these, just from my perspective, is, is that you never get a real read of how they're going to be playing until they leave, right? But at least if you've got offense and defense, you mm -hmm. get to see the composition of the defense because it's not likely they go back and change. Right, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So it looks like we're still just waiting for the team comps to show up here. And it seems both teams going for this Metro. Not actually to play this Metro, just to teleport out quickly. Um, most likely Grouse and Grafton are going to swap over onto the Reaper there. So we're looking at both teams running the Reaper and the um, the Doomfist is his name. So it's going to be... Just, it is his name. Yeah, it is his name, yeah. Um, I've heard that there's been a lot of damage done by, I think it was Lazico's uh, pick oh, here. Oh, Lazico and Sigma has actually been insane. Like, yeah. I think at one point in the previous matches he was solo carrying 3 uh, 3v1, you know? So you see the teleport yeah. going out, so... Grace swapping over to the Reaper. Okay, so you get a fa faster change to get towards the point quite quickly and moving around over on the left side as well. Then. Early fights going down, and much damage shouldn't be done immediately because those shields are up, but eventually then you're going to have a lot done. Straight up Arisa fight going down, and it's going all over in favor of Grafton going in with the Reaper. Lots of picks going their way, and it looks like we're seeing the point easily won over with the, the Reaper. It just seems like KSP just had way more pushing power. Like, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was... Um, the other team, uh, when all the team have named, not not really wanted to aggress as much, but you can see KSP just pushing super strong into them, getting the pick straight away. And like, this is the kind of team comp. If you lose one or two people, you like lose all momentum. And we see them come back in. Pull coming out. Rock almost hidden there. Super Soldier does get the kill onto uh, Chico, so that's a pretty decent kill. It's a nice fist off the bat, and then with the Reaper going up the top. This will be a little bit dangerous. Grafton coming down behind. He's catching a lot of damage from the shields. are blocking it and it's done. Lazico, you can see the damage that he's been able to do with the Sigma. Already two taken down. Julo falling. I'm Batman. He's got himself one. No supports anymore. Chico's not long for this world. He's floating around doing as much as he can. But eventually that point goes over to Wemmel. This team have a name. And you can see the awareness there from Lazico. Like, he's really knowing when Grafton is teeping behind him. He knows to rock him immediately. Like, Grafton can't get any space at the moment because of Lazico. Like, Lazico's Sigma is really something to be watching out for here. Yeah, we knew that from the very start that Lazico could be doing a lot of damage on that Sigma and coming through with it immediately. And the ult charge is up there with the Super Soldier going in. But he's taken down immediately, not even able to deploy it in time. Grafton. Now, on the back of that, they're starting to push on forward. One of the main DPS is taken out of the picture. You've got your shields going forward. Give them a little bit of protection, but actually warped in together. This is going to be pretty rough for them. As the fight overall for Wimbledon's team have a name. They've got a lot of ultimates online, popping them off. And this could be dangerous now, considering the fact that Reaper Grafton's just got his ultimate up. We're going to see a Death Blossom swinging in. Maybe not even. They, do they need to? I don't think they even need to use any ults here. I think the KSP kind of have this, but you can see uh, when ults team have a name actually pushing and using a lot more ults than they maybe should be doing in this fight. I think this is the last fight that they don't need to be using ults in at all. You can see KSP going to be taking this, but 
you can see that when all the team have named, he's almost four ults in that fight, which is really going to be making it hard for them to retake this uh, this next push here. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the ultimate charges at the minute, Grathen obviously has his up still preserving the death blossom, but we did see quite a bit. Taff popping out his. Uh, Julo is about to pop up as well. So, I mean, the ult economy is definitely swinging towards KSPs. So now I guess it's just going to be down to skirmishing at the moment, trying to get some charge built up because they have this to fall back on. Grathen with the death blossom onto the Zico. And with that, the support's now left alone. Not long for this world. Even chasing them down just to stagger a little bit more, but not even able to take Ali down. So To be fair, if you're, when, with, if you're this, uh, the when will see map name, if you're them, that's actually a good fight for you because it means you got a lot of ults out of uh, KSP yep. play playlist for not a whole lot of time. That wasn't a super long fight, so didn't get delayed super long. So I think going into this next fight, when will the team have name is looking pretty good here. Let's see if we push him in. I mean, it's going to be a completely ultimate fight, which, like you said, is a really solid position to play from considering where they were at just a couple of seconds ago. Mm -hmm. They're starting to move on forward. Nothing really hit when it comes down to the stuns. Diving in there, the Doomfist is getting a lot of damage. And Grafton, this would be a great time for him to have his Death Blossom, but haven't already burned it up. They know this. When will this team have a name? Pushing forward. Super Soldier, the Zico, Grouse, everybody is doing it. And the youngest, younger Scally swinging in with the fist. For the youngest Super Scally. Really? The youngest, younger, younger. The youngest of the young, younger Scallies. Wow, okay, young. that's very young, yeah. The ults at least are built up somewhat when it comes over to KSPs to try and get that retake through, but and they're right on the verge, so what fight needs to go their way? Considering the fact that they've got a little bit of a safety net with Yamba going to be able to throw down the sound barrier and keep his team alive if things do get a little bit worse. where if you're Wendell, you have a name, and, uh, you play super aggro here. Ults coming out, which is like the Lucio coming out from KSP. You can see the signal as well. It's pretty close, looks like it's going to be KSP's drill players taking the advantage of the moment of the fight. Oh, they're just doing the clean of duty here. Super Soldier does get Grafen, which is a kill, but it's not going to be enough to keep this fight going. No, I think not you might see like a really staggered fight coming in here from when all the team have You see Lazico swapping over to the uh, Wrecking Ball just to get the last minute touch. You have Batman coming here on the Lucio, going to be trying to do something, but he's not going to get anything done. And uh, the focus is like you do have the. Uh, uh, no, uh, it's it's going to be KSP pushing us and. Finishing off these staggered pushes that are trying their best to get in, but I mean a brave attempt dropping the ult there, but and, and alongside the shield, but they just push straight past that they know that there's no support coming through. They can push off that point, focus the Orisa, and take it one to zero. Starting off well on Lee Jang Tower recovery but still, on the It's 90 to 100, like it's not a it's not a roll or anything like that. Both teams are performing incredibly well. Um, you can see when all the team have named, despite being sort of a ragtag group of just young lads together having fun, like they're doing pretty well compared to the, some of the players on KSP's drill playlist. I know Yanba actually won Insomnia 64. Oh no, sorry. Uh, yeah, Yanba, uh, or Grathen won Insomnia 64. Okay. Grathen won it. Um, I think he was against Yanba on the other team. Um, so Grathen is, you know, a well experienced player. So when all the team have a name, we're going, going up against fairly decent players in the side of KSP's, KSP's drill playlist. Like. So when we look One, towards the inner point two, at the moment going through, I'd love to see the maze coming out. This is a, a, a composition that we've seen quite a bit, uh, especially in the Irish scene. Alongside Grouse, going to be able to do a lot of damage when the Death Blossom comes up. But so far, the highlight for me has really been Groot and Zico, who's now swapped off the Sigma. They did a lot of damage when it came down to the, those last couple of fights, especially Groot. So I'm looking to see what damage he's going to be able to get through. That Ryan is completely walled off and frozen now at the moment, but a good That's shield a comes through to save there. it. Good save for a minute. You can see Ryan's still going to be alive, able to do more damage charging in. Knows to pop the shield up to get those heals on. And being focused up by the Moira certainly helps him. Down goes the May. No more freeze to come through. And Grouse is just owning this point at the moment. Just has to deal with Grathen. We're starting to get a lot done on the Reaper. And actually can't manage it, but Drunk Dino there to trade off. And they'll get the point. Clocking up in their favor. This is really dangerous for Wendell, this team of name. Like, they're down two people. And I think KSP recognizes they're going to be pushing in and trying to take over the point. They know there is a team that's uh, oh, coming out there. You can hear the Lucio calls being there. They're really trying to focus up those supports at the moment over on the KSP side. And they managed to get him as well. Lucio falling. This is going to hurt them a little bit, especially because the shields are already broken. Ryan's managed to get his back up and now walled off just for the protection to get back with the heals. And great play by Brute. Popping Drunk Dino up in the air and then afterwards being finished off by Julo. Now they're walled off on the stagger, but still trying to get in there and do some damage. They're able to pick off Lazico, which is decent enough. Those walls were a little bit late coming through from the May to catch anyone off, but look, they still get a couple of picks. And that's oh, all that really matters. Coming out onto um, uh, Chico there in the May from on Batman. Not sure how that happened, but that's a pretty good push. They're a pretty good killed push off of for when the team have a name. 
If they can get on the point quick enough, they should be able to capitalize on that. Already here at the moment, the Arisa has been spotted in the back lines, but what a death loss by Gratham, picking up three, finishing off Kraus afterwards, and that is just an easy repulsion by KSPS. And this is the thing, right, so, so they bait them in with the fact that Chico's already gone, obviously not intentionally, but make the best of a bad situation, get them up close, and then in goes Gratham, and out goes when That's what we saw in Insomni 65, was Gratham just coming in with those death losses at the last second and just destroying the enemy team. Yeah. You know, like, if you don't pay attention to Grafton, you are going to lose the match because he is a top-tier player. And certainly winning on the ult economy as well when it comes to KSPS. They've got four up. They're missing Root and Grafton, but that's not going to be the biggest of deals. Look at this. Ice Wall, and then followed in by a Blizzard. Nothing that they can do at the moment. And when will this team have a lane? A name pushed back yet again. Drunk Dino eliminated. That's one of their main tanks already out of the play. And Lozico is going to have to do all the shielding for the team. The heals are there to keep them alive for a little bit longer. But eventually, I mean, it's just... Too much damage output, not enough healing, not enough shielding for them. I think losing the Reinhardt to start the fight there is what lost it for them. Like, you, you lose that main tank, you're just going to be completely, you know, you don't have the pushing power anymore against these two shields that are on the side of uh, KSP's real playlist. So. Like and they're they, picking need to be, they need to stop taking these fights where they're already down a person. I, I mean, it's a Lucio that's taking them out for the most part. He's just got three picks there, I think. And again, just staggered even further. 90% of the point now. And this is a huge recovery from KSPS on the last time they played Li Zhang Tower. But like we said, they, they got dominated after already. Oh, it looks like Zico actually spotting out Graf in there in the corner. It saves them a little bit, but again, it's not going to do, oh, do too much for them, no, because Graf is still able to pick up the Dino, the Zico, Super Soak. Everyone's falling. The ult's being thrown out at the last second because it's overtime, right? You want to just win this fight, and it's GG. And although we're going to see a very brave attempt by Graus to stay alive, he was shifting all around that point, but it just can't be done, Andy. Yeah, it's going to be KSP Drill Playlist taking this first map, so... So it's a best of five series, so they only have to win two more to take the entire series. Two more maps and that's it for uh, KSP's real playlist. It's still a long enough road though when you look at it. Uh, it. We could definitely see things flipping around. Look, this is when he got spotted up close, I think. Oh no, it wasn't. This was the push before 29%. Yeah, the, the ult where he finds the Reaper Reaper. That's what I'm saying, though. If you don't pay attention to Graf, he's going to do stuff like that. The second you stop paying attention to him, he's going to be in your back line. He's going to be taking you out, you know? And they tried to recover it there at the end because you saw the second time they go in he as was a full team the push. They yeah. check it, they yeah. make sure he's not there. They miss the boulder on him, unfortunately. And then afterwards, obviously, just completely shut down by the huge ult economy advantage the KSPS had. And the issue there, I think, for Wimbledon's team have a name, you're going in, you're trying to select your moment to try and use those what the little ults that you have ready to pop but as soon as KSPS see an opportunity they jump on it they completely exactly. eradicate your back line I think there's a lot more decisiveness it. on the side of KSP whereas when will the team have name is taking a bit too long to engage they're taking too long to disengage in fights that they've already lost yeah absolutely you know like, so I think it's kind of the player experience showing up on the side of KSP whereas when will the team have name doesn't have that level of experience so they're kind of you know maybe the stage is getting a bit to them you know maybe they're not sure they've got the crowd in front of them they're you know yeah. feeling it a bit um, but we'll, we'll have to see in this next match. So yeah, I think I think that's the thing as well. Is there's a little bit more pressure on them as well because they beat them last time. They, they've got to obviously prove that it wasn't a one-off, but it was a very close game, like you said. And there, the thing that worries me is KSP has picking up the first point, but the second looked a little bit more like they were in control the whole time. It wasn't as scrappy as yeah. we saw when it came to the the first point on Legion. Oh, I'd say for sure. Like I mean, the other the, the first match today versus uh, KSP, you could see that KSP maybe wasn't feeling it. They were in an unfamiliar setup. They were you know getting everything set up at the start. But this is a different team from the start. I think this is a much more decisive team. This is a much more confident team that we're seeing today. So, and I mean, they know that they they know if they win this, they they win the prize. They take home the money. They take home the glory. Um, so I think it's up to when will the team have a name to you know get that sort of motivation themselves and start bringing it back. And defending the, the upper bracket title. And this is something that I, I, I like about the format here. We haven't given a one map advantage over towards either team uh, coming into this. It is just a flat best of five to yep. decide it, which means obviously we get a little bit more overwatch out of them. But also, if you think about it now, after that great first map of Li Zhang Tower, you would now be tied up. Yeah, exactly. You'd be neck and neck, even though you're looking like the more dominant team. So certainly seeing a little bit more from KSPS. Uh, now with the 1-0 lead, they'll have more confidence behind them. And that, and that worries me then when we've already seen the indecisive plays coming through from Wimbledon's team have a name. That may be further amplified as you move on to higher stakes, obviously being 1-0 I think down. that's what makes a, a good team versus a bad team, is just them being able to keep the momentum going. You know, like they want to push this momentum from this first win and like really, I think if we see a dominant play from uh, KSP here in this map, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be seeing, uh, we got a bit of tech there going on. Uh, 
Yeah, it was uh, so just the, the score down the bottom we don't have. So obviously it's one to zero to KSPS. If yeah. you're just tuning in, you're just joining us now. They've taken the first map. They've got to get to three to win, whichever team makes it there first. It's the best of five. And the thing right now, so where, where are we Do you remember what the, the next pool is? Because I think it's uh, so it's going to be pool. Hollywood. Uh, they have the choice of Hollywood, Numbani, or Eichenwald. So it's going to be the map choice of when will the team have a name. Yeah, the I think previously they pay, played Hollywood, and actually I think they lost to KSP on that, okay. if I recall correctly. So it's going to be, you know, maybe Eichenwald or Numbani. Oh no, sorry, it was Numbani that they lost them on. Um, so okay. maybe they're going to pick, you know, Hollywood or Eichenwald. Um, hopefully we'll be seeing Eichenwald's map I quite enjoy. I think there's a lot of different like high grounds, there's a lot of different ways to play it. You know, it, it sort of encourages unique strategies that uh, we would see. And it actually is going to be Eichenwald that we're going to be playing perfect. here. So perfect prediction from myself. You know? This is some <laughs> just showing up. <laughs> this is somewhere that we can see a lot more like the, the Farrah Mercy maybe making an appearance around that first point especially. You yeah. get so much high ground to take cover on. The likes of the clock tower just dancing around and doing the damage. And it looks like far. actually KSP are on defense. And on defense and Bandy, they did play a Bastion strategy. So I'm expecting oh, them okay. to be running the Bastion here again on Eichenwald first defense. You can actually set up on top of the Hunting Lodge, I think it's called, and uh, use the Bastion there, and it's really hard to push against. So I think um, when will the team of name show that they were kind of struggling against that Nobani, so we're going to be probably seeing KSP running the same thing again. We'll be seeing it right now. Ready Looks like they're actually that. choosing not to go with the Bastion on defense here from KSP, which is interesting. I think they were showing a lot of strength on it, so maybe they're just more confident in this Mayfair, I think, that they... Uh, would prefer to be playing that instead of Bastion. Attackers incoming in 30 seconds. So the the just to triple check, the names are swapped now at the bottom, right? Uh, when will this yeah, team so have when will this team have a name? This side is okay? the red team at the moment. So. Yeah. Okay, so ouch, ouch, that's just due to ouch, how Overwatch ouch. does yeah. attack and defense. So. Yeah. Well, I remember the day that I put uh, the colorblind settings on. <laughs> that was. Just don't do it. If you're ever watching over what's spectating, don't. Just If you're colorblind, take it off. Just yeah. deal with it. It just doesn't work. So I, I like this addition now because you've got Sigma with the portable shield. He can just block out the rockets coming through from Farah. And now we see a Farah Mercy fight. Not likely to net a kill all too uh, quickly. These tend to be just kind of... Bat a couple rockets in the mercy field. Well, depends on who's Vera. I think um, Grace might be showing up at well here. I'm not sure about Chico's Vera. I don't know the player too well, but I know Grace is decent on the Vera, so we'll be seeing him doing a lot of poke damage here. He is taking the fight 1v1, and two Vera's going at us. There are shots exchanged, but he's actually confirming the kill here. Getting away from the roof there for some avoiding the splash damage. The shield's being used to just make sure the Vera isn't getting up to all too much. Actually, Julo take the kill onto the Moira of when will this team have a name, so Julo doing a bit more damage there, and probably when will this team have a name, backing off into the spawn, just regrouping, getting their spawns back. They have plenty of time, they have three minutes, so no worries at all. Oh. Oh. Chico getting the direct hit actually onto the Mercy, so that would have been two hits onto AL34 there. Pole coming out, doesn't hit him there. So backing off a little bit. And, and they need to at this point. When will, when will this team have a name after losing their, the Mercy as well? You need to just regroup. As, how do you think about Mercy? Obviously, she can fly up, so she's not staggering the, the attack all too much. The shields go down, the push coming forward. Again, just looking to block out that fire as much as possible with the Sigma Shield. And here she comes in, Chico. No, not going to pop the ult just yet. Wait for the Rocket Mirage. Again, Julo getting the picks here. Like, I don't know where Julo's positioning, but he's managing to take off a lot of the side when the team have a name. Oh, they're bullying him. Look at that. The, I think it was the May just getting booped forward. Absolutely no way out. Surrounded. Just complete completely there and Julo on the I'm Batman again. But and that's the thing is, though, like, it's a mental, like mentally, that's going to mess with when will this team have a name. 100%. You know? I mean, you're just being slapped around, right? You can't get a yep. damn thing done. Every time you try to move forward, all of a sudden you're in their lines. They're all around you, and they're just poking you. Exactly. The Poor younger, younger Scally. Like, Super Soldier is, you know, not doing too super at the moment. So we're going to be seeing them trying to push in like, once again. But Chico getting the kill. Oh, he the like, over Blizzard. the air. Blizzard coming out. It isn't actually as deep as it could be. It's blocked off of the ice wall that came through. You still see them coming out on top, though, over on the red side. When will this team have a name? And, okay, you have the Pharah on Pharah pick. Easy when she's rocket barraging. Just stood still. But as long as that's traded out, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. At the moment, just about holding on KSP in blue on the site. You can see Julo trying to take a scrappy fight. Bolts are coming out though, so it seems like KSP think they can actually win there. So looking at it, they are pulling that supercharged group gets a kill into Lazico and Julo and it's cleaned up. Like, like with the amount of kills that uh, one of the team of name, you didn't expect them to be losing that. Like again, that's where the team is just faltering. Like they they have the advantage, but they're not pushing it aggressively enough. I'm not sure if he hit that, but I think it was Brute was up in the air and threw the boulder out, and it looked like it actually hit it over onto Lozico. Not 100% on that. 
but it's definitely very close. And Lazico died instantly anyway. Only so. one minute left there, so when you see what they do, feel the pressure. Oh, beautiful pull put in by my result. You're going to be taking a lot of damage because of that. Now just position in the back line, getting the heals on. And this is beautiful from KSP. They're completely locking them out. And no way out from Lazico either. Being hunted all the way through. Moira does the damage, even though he was absorbing those shots. Doesn't quite work. For and you see, like that fight started off with uh, when all the team have names starting with an ult, but they're still not managing to push into that ult and like, actually get the kills from it. Zico did get a, I think it was a four-man uh, sigma ult, but they just couldn't follow up on it. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you can hit your ults all day long, but if you're not connecting the kills in the back of it, who gives a damn? This could be dangerous from Chico as well. He's starting to get a little bit aggressive with that positioning over the roofs and has got the Rocket Barrage to play with, but knows that he can't quite go in for it just yet. You have to wait until the perfect opportunity. And here it is. They're all grouped up. Just takes out the old man. And bails on back. He's playing it careful, like, which I think he should be doing. Like, I think they know that he is Barrage and he's going to come in for it at any moment. First, he had to go back there as well and start healing some of the, I think it was a tap who was quite low on the point, so Farrah couldn't really get aggressive on the back of that. You'll save it until right at the end. Now the overtime, one huge ult could be there, and Chico in with two already. Lazico, and they're all gone. Four kills coming through, and Chico wins it for the team. Easily connected, and that is going to be hard to beat on the defense. That's a decisive full hold there from KSP. I don't know what one... What when will this team have a name, what they're going to be doing next? Like, they really need to pull, pull out some pocket strategy here, because... Uh, you have to full hold against KSP's drill playlist. Chico and Nefera has Not been easy. absolutely destroying here. And yeah, Chico was yeah. just uh, aerial superiority across the board. And it's going to be so hard to, to push him back now. Maybe we'll see the likes of a Bastion play come out for when will this team have a la name. I don't know how they like to how they like to play on Eigenvalda, but something needs to change. If you just go in here vanilla, you're not going to be, uh, you can't expect a flawless hold like that. Yeah. I'd just like to say, uh, when will the team have name? is probably the most difficult name to say quickly in a cast. 100%, yeah. Yeah, 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 th yeah. thanks for that, Irish guys. Yeah, appreciate much, it. much appreciated. Yeah. Like. Just throw it out like, oh, they're going to when will the team have a name? <laughs> You're going to go into like proper horse race and cast them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I don't know, like, they, they really have to bring out something amazing here because like, it, it's such a hard push, or so, so, such a hard defense for them. And even if they do hold it, if they do full hold it, they still go into an oasis. They have to play a, a Koth map just to decide this match. So it's going to be really difficult for uh, Wendell's team of name. And it does look like they are going out with the Bastion. So thing is, though, KSP has run the Bastion themselves. They know how to run the strat. They know how to counter it as well. It's going to be really difficult for uh, Wendell's team of name to actually make use of this. And they have to hold it for four minutes. I think it's different when you are defending with the knowledge that, oh, if we, if we lose this, you know, okay, we can just keep on pushing it through the next part. We'll be fine. Like, we have time. When you're defending it and you know that this is it, you have to hold for the whole four minutes or you lose. Mentally, that's a different thing, and I don't know if Wendell's team of name are prepared for that. Well, I think the thing as well for KSP at the moment, over in blue, they're not going to be attacking. They can play a much slower game with their ultimates. They can wait because they just need one fight, exactly. one tick. If they're on there for three or four seconds, they've already won it, and that's... They'll play slow, they'll build up their ults, they'll try to burn down the other teams. Yeah, okay, maybe they'll die, but then they hit back and they've got the ult economy in their favor and it's going to be virtually impossible. You can actually see a boop there coming out from Chico, booping the entire Bastion setup down, getting the hit onto Super Soldier as well. Ooh, another hit, but not getting the confirmation on the kill. Yeah, you got to hit that second rocket onto her. Mercy heals Farah up almost immediately. So you can see that boop really displaced them. They're not in the position they want to be. They want to be on top of the Hunting Lodge there, but they're kind of in a corner in an awkward situation here. Chico and Super Soldier exchanging rockets, but nobody actually getting a kill at the moment. They're trying to make it back up there, but now already on the point, have to fight Almost vertically. On point Fantastic on the brute. I mean, taken out of the equation completely. Only one tank left, and it's going to be Drunk Dino getting a lot of damage in. Super Soldier as well. Looks like they've won out the fight and they've repelled them once more, but they have to do it a couple more times. You can see how close that got. That was, you know, the uh, matter of like half a second and they would have just gotten the win there. So it's it's really With, without down a to the single wire. ult coming through. Without a single ult, you know, and you can see Grathen, he's already at almost 60% to his uh, hands ult there. Once that comes out, you're going to be in a really difficult situation because it's going to push out the Bastion setup that they have. Yeah. Um, you can block it, so even even as they move down towards the point, if you if you hit that Hanzo ult properly, they're going to take a lot of damage, so they have a choice to either tank the damage and then take a fight that they're at a disadvantage in, or sit up there and lose. Exactly, exactly. So it's, it's kind of a catch frame too, no matter what you do, you're in a crappy situation. You can see um, Roadhog on the right side there, looks like he's going for a bit of shield spam, or maybe going for a hook. Like, it's every single angle uh, coming down here. That's decent that's keeping them alive. Exactly as expected. I mean, they're kept back. 
the, as soon as the Hanzo ult goes through, it's the end of the game. And exactly, exactly. It's a shame because when you're on the defense like that and you pick a Bastion setup, as soon as they counter it, they get an ult like a, a Hanzo online. It's not like you can... I mean, they realize Hanzo's coming. And they're trying to figure out a strategy for what happens when he ults, but you can't go back and change characters, you know? If you, if yeah, you exactly. roll back, they've already won. You, do, you just screwed at that point. It's going to be 2-0 now to uh, KSP's real playlist. So they have one more map to take the best of five series here against Wendell's team up, and they have to take the first place prize. So a lot of pressure now onto Wendell's team up. Maybe they have to do a reverse sweep of, what is this, three maps? Three maps this? in a row, yeah. yeah. And, and it's not easy, especially because we've already said we saw that they were a little bit indecisive when it came down to the offense, when it came down to Lijiang Tower. Now you've got a lot of pressure on your back, and that's certainly not going to help the decision making. It doesn't make you more relaxed. If anything, you're starting to get a little bit tilted at this point and go, okay, it's, it's hard. I mean, three maps in a row, that's going to be virtually impossible looking at it as an overall task, considering yep. how they just they started out close on the first point of Lijiang. Then it got a little bit more one sided for KSP, and that point there was just domination. The thing is, they do have the map choice now of 2 CP, so if they have any pocket strats in the, the first match of Temple Anubis of when will the team have a name versus yeah. KSP, that went down to the wire. That was literally, you know, like I said, two kills was the difference between the entire thing going to when will the team have a name versus KSP. So I think if you're going to be confident in any map type here as when will the team have a name, it's going to be 2CP. Two two, two, two two CP, yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to be seeing, I think it's Temple of Anubis, uh, Volskaya, and <laughs> some other 2CP map, Paris, yeah. Paris. The, everyone's Paris. favorite map. Everyone okay. loves getting Paris in matchmaking. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think they actually removed it from matchmaking pool in this latest season. You know, that's how much people just love. Yeah, it's how much love they love. Paris. They were playing it too much, so yeah, yeah, they uh, had to yeah. take it out. <laughs> people just wouldn't. They would leave if it was another map. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Um, no. Okay. So. Looking at that, just run through the maps one more. It's Paris. Yeah, so it's Paris, Temple of Anubis, and Volskaya, Volskaya Industries. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've seen a lot of teams in Ireland playing Volskaya whenever I've been sitting in on scrims. I don't know. Where, where, where do you feel like the Irish sides take it at this point to have the best chance? To be honest, I think given that they were so strong on Temple of Anubis and they had some strategies that it looks like KSP's real playlist wasn't entirely confident in going against, they ran the Bastion. They ran Bastion Junkrat, actually, okay. on the Temple of Anubis. And I think if I were Wendell's team, I have a name. I'd be picking Temple of Anubis because it's something they're familiar with, it's something they know. They know that KSP isn't exactly confident on it. So. Okay. The KSP did take it last time. I just, just They did take it, yeah, but it was very, yeah. very close. It was literally down the wire. So. I wonder then if you, because you know it was kind of a close map, do you still swing towards picking it knowing that it, it could be close again and then you're kind of flipping a coin? But then I think you're back. flipping a coin if you don't pick it because then you're like, you yeah, know, maybe, maybe they have a super strong full sky and Absolutely. their Paris is amazing. You know, it's taking a risk where, you know, at the moment, you're on the wire, you need to go with what you know is at least 100%. a better chance. Yeah, yeah you got to pick whatever your comfort is and just roll with that. And I think that's something that we see a, a little bit more. Like when you've structured teams and you can obviously look at if they've played for three months, you know what maps they're good on, you know what maps they're bad on, what maps they pick, what maps they don't. But when it comes down to this kind of environment, you really just have to look. It's, it's the typical analyst thing that you say, and I, I hate hearing it, and I hate saying it, but you got to play your own game. And yes. at the end of the day, that's the only way to go at it in maps, in games so like this. And indeed, we have Like I said, it looks like the Temple of Anubis is the pick for them. Um, they're going towards what they know, what they think they're strong on. So, um, And I think it's actually, so it's when will the team have a name on the blue side now, and KSP's real playlist on the red side. It's going to be swapping around once again. Um, when will Seam have a name is going to be on the defense here. It's going to be interesting seeing if they actually go with the Bastion Junkrat that they ran on the previous time because it did really seem like KSP's drill playlist did not know how to deal with it. They ended up running Dive, which is which worked out for them in the end, but it was very, very scrappy. Like, it was yeah. not a clean dive at all. Um, so we're going to be seeing now once the heroes unlock. So we'll be going with the... Oh, actually, yeah, yeah going with the Bastion so Junkrat. So it is what they know before. And you have Grathen on the Symmetra. I'd say probably going to swap it over as the Reaper. Um, after this, uh, after the yeah. first initial teleport. So the, the thing for anyone that isn't familiar with Overwatch, the red team are currently going to be attacking. So they're left in the base uh, for another 20 seconds. So they can just mess around. They can pick characters willy-nilly, whatever yeah. they want to do. Over on the blue side, though, they have to go to the point and defend, which means that if they've picked at this point, we won't see a change come through because the time it takes to run back, change, and get back, the fight's already happening, and you're on your way back. Go, wait for me, guys. Exactly, exactly. So now we'll see the red team. That is K KSPS, KSP's uh, picking out there. Okay, so they are swinging, like you said, with Grafton coming in with the Reaper. Uh, we've got Chico. It's interesting seeing Chico pick the Widowmaker, because I don't think against this double shield setup, Absolutely. the Widow is really going to be super helpful. Um, I suppose they're really depending on... Okay, so he's going to be swapping over to Mei now, so it looks like he's just going for that initial pick, maybe the initial scout. Um, and you can see KSP's real playlist just bunching up there, walling off the Bastion there, so he can walk by 
and the issue is here, they walk by, but they still need to walk into a Bastion at some point here. Um, a Bastion and the Junkrat, there's going to be a lot of spam coming into them. Uh, wall coming up once again, be rushing forward here, but that double shield is really hard to break. You have Chico flanking underneath them here. Chico swapping over, I mean, it's definitely the right call once they see that double shield. You don't want to be rocking the Widow. And two picks coming in already, that is very hazardous for the defense. They're being torn apart. Grouse is their last chance, but he's actually in front of the shield at this point, so he shouldn't be alive for too much longer. And Grathen takes him out. This is a clean attack by KSPs, and again, a huge problem for the Irish boys, because now Wemmel, this team, have a name, have got to defend. I mean, they've got to run down a lot more time. And considering the fact that the last map was so dominant, this is, isn't going to help the mentality. Oh, absolutely. I think it's interesting. KSP, it seems like maybe they took some time, looked over the previous map, were like, okay, here's how we didn't deal with the Bastion last time, here's what we can do this time now. And like, it was way more decisive. There wasn't as much mess as you saw in the, uh, the first map that they had done on Temple when it was earlier this morning. Yeah, I, I, I didn't see that one, but I, I definitely hope that the teams did have a little bit of a look over it and figure out. And I hope that the Irish guys aren't just trying to rinse and repeat that they have. I guess some predictions on what's going to be going down. Something in the back pocket at the moment. Coming down with a shield composition on the defense still. The same crowd rocking through in the old spot from KSPs. They haven't netted a kill just yet, but Lazico getting frozen and then immediately taken down by the May. A lot of damage being done by Chico right now with one of the shields removed. They're going to focus over towards the May that's being isolated out on his own. And the younger, younger Scally is going to be no more. Unfortunately, this is looking like it's going to be a dominant KSP, but luckily there's a fast rotation coming through from my mother's team, Ebonade. They're able to get back out there. Grathen doing some damage. The shield just about blocks enough that they're going to be able to survive. Good healing coming through from Moira as well. As Allo 4 keeps Lazico alive a little bit longer. And eventually we see a sound barrier come out as well. I mean, they're desperately trying to clutch onto this with the support ults coming through. And winning the fights for now, Ice Wall goes through. No way out for the tanks. And this is a finally a defense for my mother's team, have a name. Running down a little bit more time, and now they're just toying with them. That last kill on the Brute, it's delayed a little bit, and that really helps because it means now Brute's going to take an extra couple seconds to spawn, and they'll have to wait for him before they can push through. You can see there, though, like the, that's the matter of 2CP, is they're getting like picks and picks and picks. It's a really messy fight, but you can see when will the team has name, they get one pick. That means that they you know, they get their respawns, whereas uh, KSP's drill playlist are not getting yeah. those respawns as quickly. So it ends up going in the favor of when will the team have name. And I don't think KSP, yeah, KSP actually didn't get a single tick, despite them being on the point for about two minutes. Yeah, and look at how close the spawn are for blue there it's right behind that little blue area for the red it's a solid 15 20 second walk away Bongo and Leo from here Graves actually used to use that one only gets to Lucio but that could be enough to push the fight over to their favor but Rue coming out with a huge signal up there getting uh, four people and it's just Batman there on the Lucio trying to climb up into a corner the Zico trying to keep the points alive as much as he can do Reaper coming back in to get the touch but it looks like it's me KSV taking that point there Three minutes, 30 seconds on the clock left. That's quite a lot to work with at the moment. But, you know, you consider what did they start off with. They almost got entirely pushed forward on the first point. So they had a lot of time. Six minutes, or so. Six minutes something like that. Yeah, so, like, given three minutes, that's pretty decent considering think, yeah. what the start was. The, the, the difference there, I think, when will the team have a name if they had just one fight that they won on that first point? Because they just got torn apart immediately. And it can be harder to hold the first for sure. Yeah. I think that... It, we needed to just see them run down a little bit more time because we know that the defense of KSPS is just dominated in that previous one. You look at Eigenvalda, they had no problem defending. Now it's a different map, it's going to be different compositions, mm -hmm. but carrying forward that defensive mo uh, momentum and motivation, it's going to be hard for when will this team have a name to really beat that time. Uh, they, I, I don't see them having too much of a problem getting to the end overall, uh, certainly pushing it to B point and then maybe taking it over the line, but it's all about time. They need to give themselves as much as possible, which means a dominant first point offense. Exactly, so that's where I want to see what um, KSP are going to be defending with here. It looks like they have got a, a Zarya, but I'm not sure if they're going to be keeping with that as they're walking out from spawn here. If they are, no, it looks like it's okay. going to be the normal double shield sort of meta for this map, and meta in general. So you can see the uh, blue team here just sort of running around in spawn, not really committing to any picks at the moment because they don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. If, you're, if you're new to Overwatch, it's worth mentioning. Like, So the spawn for blue team is, what would you say, ten, 10 seconds away from the actual point? Yeah, it's something like that. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, whereas red is it's similar, it's slightly longer, right? 15 seconds or 15, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's it's a slightly longer uh, rotation time. What that means is if you see a fight very quickly trading one for one, that the blue team will get reinforcements quicker after the respawn than the red. Exactly. So those scrappy fights actually favor the, the offense a lot of the time. On the red team, they really need to survive. That's their, their main goal here. Yeah, and then it flips back over on the uh, second point. So. Yeah. 
Now coming up the backside here, we're getting to pull immediately to try and get some damage in. Still a May in play for the, the attacking team here of Wemble. Does this team have a name? He's going to try to wall someone off and see if they can just keep them forward away from healing. There it is. A couple of guys actually come forward. There. And it's the Sigma that's in a lot of danger, being frozen at the moment. And although he gets frozen, will he be finished off? I think he's just a little bit too far away and he's being focused by the Lucio at the moment. Yamba following with him, but he's very low. Lucio's going to be slippery to try and finish off. But at least they pushed them off the high ground and now looking to finish off the fight. Still no picks, though. And again, you can see the decisiveness there from KSP. They immediately back off, whereas when the team of name is not pushing in when they need to be. The Coalescence does come out there. Uh, coalescence versus Coalescence, though. The Healing's going to be hard to maintain, and it looks like we could have had a pick there, but May getting her icicle out in time to keep herself alive. The iceberg, so to speak. Oh, charging on forward. You got a, a fight of Lucio versus Reaper on the upper side, and I'm happy that Yamba backs off eventually. He was in a lot of danger. Shields aren't up, and down goes Julo. This is getting a little bit dangerous now, losing one of their main tanks off the bat. Out goes the Doomfist of Chico trying to get some damage in to return that favor, but he couldn't do it as Grouse shuts him down, and this is looking pretty good for the offense for the moment. Especially as they've got that sound barrier up alongside of Blizzard, caught in the corner, Grafton's out, and this looks like they've managed to do it. It cost them a little bit more time, and you've still got a scrapping group looking to delay them as long as possible. He knew he was dead there, but it's just about running the clock down, and two minutes and 15 seconds or so, it's a little bit slower, but it's definitely a, a, an improvement. Yeah, definitely. It looks like the Irish sides are showing up strong for now. It's going to be if they can actually push the second point. So they do have a time advantage for now, but they only have two minutes extra at the moment on top of KSP. So they really need a decisive fight here. If they can get the pole lift and get the Sigma ult, it's going to be the deciding thing here. There's no scrap here. They're just starting to move forward, looking to make some ground. Remember, the red team respawns very quickly. They're just around that corner. So when they take a kill, they need to follow it up immediately or it's Ooh, going to be a huge stagger. That's there. massive. Chico gets the two kills. Completely pushed back on the back of Chico and Tap. And then just finishing off the last couple. It's a, a few staggers is all they need. Who is it there? The thing is, you can see, like, Drunk Dino drops the bongo. You get AL34 with the world, and they don't push in. Like, they need to be pushing more aggressively. I'm seeing, like, a lot of just stick, sticking around here. Not really. There's Sigma on the ground. <laughs> having a look at us. Um, but I think Wendell's team of name really needs to be a lot more decisive. They need to push in a lot more aggressively because they're wasting ults. They're wasting a yeah. lot of time, but they don't have to give up. It know? does seem like some of the players are kind of on tune with that. The, the likes of the Drunk Dino, he's pushed all the way up, and then some of the others are kind of sitting back on, no, we should should figure out what's going on first. Exactly. You gotta, you gotta, that team synergy needs to exist. Exactly. You know, they need it's to like a strong shot caller telling them where to go. You don't necessarily need to push in immediately aggressive like that. You can play. Like, either is feasible, but you can't do both. Exactly. You, you need 50 to 50 know 50. what your team is doing. So you can graph them there, sneak in behind them. Yeah. But uh, immediately, the Lucio spots them out. So they know that Grafton is always going to be sneaking behind them. Yamba gets pulled in. Looks like he's going to get the Sigma ult here. Grafton's yeah. got his ultimate ready to go as well. Death Blossom Ooh. can come out, but Grafton's already popped his. Grouse is gone, and oh, Grouse actually popped his as well. Death Blossom was used up, and then he died. That's really harsh. It was Jules so that you took can see, down. Even though they, they uh, spotted Grafton out there, he still just went back, waited a bit, and came back around when they were still distracted. So you know, I you think need he, to he TP'd up on top. He TP'd on top, right? Yeah. yeah. But you need to pay attention to him 24/7. Either kill him or pay attention to him, because yeah. he's gonna. <laughs> if you don't pay attention to him, he's gonna end up killing you with the Death Blossom like we just saw there. 100. percent That was their flaw on Li Zhang Tower. We saw it two times come through, once where they didn't pay attention, once where they kind of did and then forgot about it. That's been a huge issue at the moment, being pushed up there by Brute. Some damage on the board immediately. And Okay, the, the defense is actually being pushed back at the moment. Tap's already popped out. There's ultimate to try and keep this team alive somewhat and deal some damage on the run back. <laughs> Gratham is in the back lines, just farming his ultimate for a second, but he gets found out quite quickly, paying attention to him now, but it's when he has that Death Blossom up that the real problems start to develop. A strong Dino gets taken down by the man himself. And, and they're falling back immediately on the back of that, but it's, it's way too... Like, they're, they're just the amount of time they're spending on that bridge, not deciding where to go. Like, they yeah. either need to play it super passive or go in aggressive, but they're just in this middle ground where nothing is happening, and it's just it just means that for KSP, they can spend the entire time farming. As you said, Grafton is behind them, farming for free. They're not knowing what to do, you know? Yeah, they, but as soon as he started to back off towards the point, they push up, they lose their... Um, was it the Orisa Yulo that died yeah. off the bat? Or, sorry, Junk Dino that died off the bat. And then they start to back off, but 
KSPS are like, nah, we're going to just push this. We're going to push you as you're falling back. They had a May, no, no ice wall going up to help them on the, the fallback. And it's just been a little bit of a disaster when it comes down so to the attack. This still is the time. aggression that we need to see now from uh, when we'll see my name. That's what they need to be doing is pushing in aggressively. Watch out for Doomfist on this. You've still got Super Soldier. Younger Young Scally has got his ultimate online. They can pop the Blizzard down alongside an Ice Wall, but he's so low and his team are already falling around him. This is, again, another solid defense from KSPS, and they are dominating this B point. It can be hard to defend A, but when you have a team that's this confident on B, I, I don't know what we need to see as a difference here. you're really feeling the, the pressure, but why, uh, if you're Wenwell, the team of a name, like you only have one minute, 30 seconds left, and you've been not doing so well on second point. They had a really good first point attack, but it's just disappeared on the second point. I don't know what's yeah. going on with them. That clock is being run down. They wall off the Reaper, but he's right on out of there. He's got support coming around as well, being healed up, tucked in the corner. This is dangerous now. Grasson's got his ultimate. Do they check it here, Andy? If they don't, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. It doesn't look like they're paying too much heat to him, but he's actually pushed back, so it's all good for now, anyways. All it takes is one second, though, and Grafton can come in, death boss, and kill your entire team. There's the Oak coming through from the Sigma house that's going to be comped up. We're looking at Yamba, keeping them alive as well. In the back of the Blizzard, they needed to make sure they've got some heals. And again, the rotates are so quickly for the red team. KSPS are already getting their uh, their Sigma back in in just a couple of seconds. But nice picks coming through. Super Soldier Ali 4, you've got a completely bully. Hulo is losing all of his health and being pushed on forward. Shouldn't be surviving too much longer as the shield was already used up. And when you walk into this little narrow hallway up against the Sigma, you're not going to be surviving all too long. It's pretty much impossible to miss your shots. So kills are coming out for when we'll see my name, but like it's the staggers in the second point, that's yep. the issue. Like you can see the red team still pushing in, that, that you, can, you can hear the target walls from up there, like they're really focusing on single targets. We've already taken that super soldier, so that's gonna be him out of the fight for the next like 20 seconds. Chico getting another kill here, Lazico getting the kill on Chico, but staggers gonna keep on coming in and coming in, and this is the last fight here for when we'll see my name. Yeah, only a couple of seconds left, and the ultimates all offline at the moment for KSPS. They're getting the faster rotations coming through with Grafton swapping over to, uh, by the looks of it, just going to be the Tracer. They're pushing them back off the point. Doesn't matter about the ticks, they need to win it completely over on the blue side, or it's all going to be over. Batman picking up one, it's easy to charge on into Yulo. He's playing that Wrecking Ball. And as they come around the corner here, nice pick on the support. This could work out now for the Irish boys. Super Soldier doing so much damage on the Doomfist. Is it going to be enough though? They need to find these picks and keep them back and they're landing them across the board. Ball coming in here. This is dangerous, man. But he's pushed back. His health is so low. You can hear the ball, ball, ball call. No one's able to deal with him just yet. Eventually, he'll be taken down. And look at this scrap, like this is about the rotation time is so quick for KSPS, they're able to keep putting players out. The likes of the Lucio dancing around, they've dealt with him and eventually get it. Two to two, no time left on the clock though. <laughs> Fair play to the lads, they uh, performed well there. Like, that was bringing it back from the brink for sure. Like, the, but the thing is, now they have three minutes and 30 seconds where they have to defend completely. This is almost an exact copy of what happened earlier this morning where uh, when will the team have an aim, had to defend for a similar amount of time and it was down to the wire, so it's going to be interesting seeing how they hold it this time. We'll see what they go for when it comes down to the composition. Like At the moment, you're looking at a very strong KSPS. I think it's no doubt they're looking like the more dominant team across the board. And mm -hmm. the defense was a little, I mean, it was beautiful from them at the very start. Eventually, we start to see when will the team have a name. And maybe this can be the start of the comeback on the offense. But it, it is the defense that needs to improve first because that's been the issue on both Eigenvalda and here on Temple of Anubis. Exactly, exactly. I think KSP just has the other team red and... You know, they're really going to have to perform at the top tier of their sort of competitive level to get this win in here. Looks like they're not going to be going with the Bastion here on the side of when will the team have a name. They're going to be going with the uh, Doomfist Reaper. So I think they're more confident in that. But you can see Grath going to be going on to Sombra. Probably just for a scout there. Probably not going to be going with that for the whole reign. But you did see them actually go in Sombra on the first time that they played uh, Temple of Nubis. They were having to push it in a similar scenario. So they could just be building up for the AMP, guaranteeing that fight win. And that's all they need. They just need one fight win, and that's going to be KSP taking the win here overall in the series. That's it. One fight, one big win for them. And three minutes and 30 seconds is a long time to hold down. Like you said, we saw it on Eigenvalda. We saw them attempted on Eigenvalda. Not, not too well. But at least changing up the composition now. So, oh, they're being pushed in the back immediately. The Lucio being focused, though. This could be a little bit dangerous from Yamba. He's made it out with one HP, but then chased down by I'm Batman. Ooh, Batman showing Lucio dominance there. Lucio v. Lucio. 
you're catching him running away as well, which makes it a little bit easier as we're just doing Fizz going with this one. He dives in the back. It's going to be a very aggressive push from Memo. This team have a name. Best defense is a good offense, but Super Soldier falls, and that's not ideal for them. He does have a decent rotation time, but this could be the push now from KSBS. They're trying to find another pick, and if they do, that will just be a straight up aggression. Getting their heels back up at the ice wall, and here we go now, pushing on forward, seeing what they can do. They know the rotation's coming around from Super Soldier any moment now, but as Grouse falls, it's looking even better for the red team. KSPS being dominant so far on the attack, and they only need one tick. Getting them into a corner, Sigma's in a lot of trouble. He's got a Reaper right behind him, and Lazico goes down. This is terrible for when will this team have a, le a name. They're already out of it. They've lost everybody, Andy, and that tick is about to be obtained. It's a GG from KSPS in a very good series. Very, very good, very good. Much more dominant than I was expecting coming into it, and I, I yeah. gotta say. I think uh, when will team have name? Maybe the stage fright got to them and they weren't prepared for it, you know? But you can see Grafen here, MVP of the match, I think, you know, he's 100%. shown himself up on the Reaper again as he was doing in Somni 65 in the UK. Uh, he's doing over here. Just the death boss is coming in. You stop paying attention to him, he's gonna come in and absolutely wreck you. As soon as you focus someone else, that's it. Death Blossom's coming through and he's deleting you before you even get a chance to see what went on. Definitely give the MVP to Grathen. Absolutely. And it's what we were saying at the very start. It was like, okay, we know the Wemble, this team have a name team. We've seen all, most of them quite a bit when it comes to all the Irish uh, tournaments in the past. But when you look at Grathen, he stands out as just such a strong DPS player. And that's certainly what's come through on the day. For sure, Overly for sure. impressive from KSPS, and I gotta say, I'm, uh, I'm I'm blown away by that performance. I was talking to them before, it, and they were saying, "Oh yeah, it's gonna be an easy game. We'll dominate <laughs> them." And man, they they're true to their word. Yeah, you know that's what you need. Though is the confidence coming into it. You know 100%. that's what the lads need to understand. Is it's a matter of confidence, and you know how you do is very much related to that. So. Um, I think we're going to be coming up on the stage there with your man in the green suit there. If he's, your man uh, in the green suit. Yeah, I forget it. his name. So <laughs> uh, you can see the teams there giving their handshakes. You know. Random applause for uh, both the teams. I think they performed very well, so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fantastic job from all the guys. Did a great show put on. KSPS are your champions, and we'll throw it over, I guess, to the, the green guy on the stage. Yeah, if, the, <laughs> if there is a green man in a suit somewhere, <laughs> he can uh, go ahead and uh, congratulate both the teams. If not, uh, <laughs> congratulations to KSP's real playlist for taking the win here in Insomnia Dublin. So they're going to be going home with the first place prize, uh, second place prize going to uh, when will the team have name, of course, and then third place going to Boomers, who were in the lower bracket there. Oh, Ho hopefully there's. with the, the prize in their back pocket, then the, when will the team have a name can, can finally get themselves a domain. They can finally <laughs> invest into a, an easier thing to say. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, I think that's, that's it for us then. Yeah. So. You know? That's it. Well, thank you for joining us here at Insomnia Dublin. It's been an absolute pleasure casting alongside yourself, Andy. Yeah. You've got to give props to the man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, like, like we said, if you guys want to get invested in the Irish Overwatch World Cup, although it's going to be a year, to, we, have to, we have to wait a little bit, you can go on over to CelticWolfhands.ie, grab yourself a jersey, and it's all going to a good cause, Andy. You want to tell it's them about that? It's in support of Dance Ireland. So every jersey that's sold on CelticWolfhands.ie is in support of Dance Ireland. So it's a great cause. Um, there you go. Very happy and they're great it. jerseys, great quality Great jerseys, well. yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So if you guys want to get in with a chance to get, grab one of those, CelticWolfhounds.ie, you can buy one on there. And as Andy said, the proceeds go to Down Central Ireland. For now, though, we're going to throw things over to a break on the stage. I don't know what's coming up next. Probably should have looked that up so I could let you guys know. <laughs> but look, it's been an absolute pleasure casting this alongside Andy with you. Uh, for ah. you guys, love you, Andy. <laughs> and we'll catch you guys sometime later. Hope you've enjoyed yourselves and have a good day. Cheers.